Oh. Oh, you're here. Okay, well, I guess I'll do the race review now. Um, didn't think you were watching me, but... Alright, I mean, I just got myself a drink, but... I got a lot to talk about, so... We gotta catch up on 10-plus races, so, uh... Here we go, got some Dr. Pepper. And, uh, we're gonna talk about the, the first... Third, almost, of the 2022 season. So, I uh, sit back, relax, I'm sure this is gonna probably take a while, because I do have a lot to say. I, I, probably a lot to say, so... Enjoy. I'll make sure I have like little like text on the top left or right of the screen of like what track I'm talking about so it would be easier to get through. And I might actually um, timestamp stuff so you can look at whatever part of the race I want to talk about. So yeah, let's get into it. So we start off with 2022 Clash at the Coliseum and Really wasn't a fan of it. Pretty pretty blunt, pretty simple. Um, the race itself, there was, I think, one green flag pass for the lead. The, the, the race had a lot of weird issues where cars had mechanical failures. There was like four, I think, that did that. Tyler Reddick was leading, lost the lead. That was, I think that was the only green flag pass for the lead was because Reddick's car blew up or had some kind of mechanical issue while he was leading. So that was uneventful um the race itself didn't seem too interesting i mean it just didn't really it, it doesn't help either that fox's camera crew are horrible they have a quarter mile track and they do like super duper close-up zoom-ins of like the racing and it's just disorients because you're not seeing the full picture and it's just it makes things so claustrophobic so and it, it's just it was just stupid that, the whole camera crew was just on, on a vacation, essentially. There was a lot of technical issues before the race even started. The National Anthem, um, it had Jeff Gordon saying nothing when gentlemen start your engines happen because the audio just stopped working, so that was awkward. Um, it was just really weird. It was just a shit show, and the race was just very uneventful to me. I just didn't think much happened. Also, the heats were, for the most part, uneventful. Um, the only memorable thing I remember is Ty Dillon being a absolute bum and pinballing his way through everyone. And then later in an interview, he doesn't regret it. And he's like, he's like, I got to do what I got to do. So he did what he had to do and ran over everyone to make the thing. So great. good job to Ty Dillon for being an irrelevant garbage driver that has one fluke win at Indy in 2014 in the Xfinity Series. So congratulations to that. So that's just peak clownery on his part. So the Coliseum was just, again, like I said, I just I don't remember much of it. I just remember more of the awkward stuff, like Ice Cube's performance. That was just because he was just by himself on the, on stage and he was singing and again it, the race was so short as it was why do we need a halftime show why it was it's stupid in general it just it's just dumb pointless irrelevant breaks the flow of the race and especially with how short the event was it was only like 50 minutes, I think. It wasn't really that long. So it was just uh, awkward. The people in the crowd, like the reaction shots, people looked confused. It, it just did make it look good. It just was stupid. The whole the whole event was just a waste of time. Uh, what I really wish they would have done is go back to Daytona. People were complaining about it, but really my only gripe was it was just way too damn long. It shouldn't have been 70 laps to begin with. Cut it in half, 35 laps, even 20, then you're, you'll be set. And I don't want to hear about, oh, the the, the 2022 one, the, the attendance was better than 2021 in the TV ratings. Well, it's like, well, the 2021 clash was just, it was doomed to fail from the start because, one, it was on a Daytona road course that no one really liked, and it just wasn't that good of a road course. Two, it was like a weekday clash race, so viewership and everything would be down. So, of course, when you look at that, it looks better. But they NASCAR purposely put that in a situation where it was just, like, doomed to fail. 
So that means nothing. 2020 class was a shit show, but um, it, again, they just need to cut it in half. 35 laps, 30 laps max, and then that's it. You don't need to go to a different venue. That just the, the Coliseum just didn't really work in my opinion, and it just was uneventful and. It was just more of just a spectacle of like, wow, they actually did this and wasted resources. So good job on NASCAR for that. And it was just, again, like I said, not much happened. I don't, it was like one green flag pass for the lead and one of it was a mechanical failure. It was either one or two. I don't know. But Logano won, of course, so that doesn't make the race any better because he's an absolute irrelevant garbage piece of shit who I could rant on for like 12 years about how terrible of a driver and asshole he is, but... That doesn't really mean it. it. just makes me forget the event even more. But even putting my bias aside, it was still like a... Still maybe a 2 out of 10. Somewhere around there. I just don't really remember much of it. And I watched it from beginning to end. So I... Uh, uh, the duels. Um, both of them were kind of on event. Not much happened in them. I don't really remember a whole lot in it. I remember Brad won the first one. And Busher won the second one. So that was cool. Brad won the first one by making a, a late race pass with a couple laps to go, and that was cool. But the fuel was very, very strung out, and it was really bizarre. I think that was just a lot of the drivers and teams just wanting everybody to not race because there was a short supply of the cars. Because before this even even started, they didn't have like back. I guess they did have backups, but it was like a very it was very limited supply. So it's just very weird. Um, this this whole Gen Seven package initially was bizarre because um it seemed like they were making it with like the 550 power package in mind but then they backpedaled on that which is good i'm saying that's a good thing but the intent of what the car was meant to be was like changed last second um in like december or january um they changed it so all the tracks are like 670 except for like eight Atlanta and daytona and Talladega. so it was like a last second thing so then it makes me questions like well wasn't Atlanta reconfigured with the 550 power package in mind? So does that contradict it? It's just weird, confusing. And then they're trying to like, I don't know. Uh, then the NASCAR trying to say like, the like this is what they meant to do all along, but that's not what it was being presented as. So it's a whole bizarre, confusing thing. So that's the, it's another weird element. But the duels themselves was just not very memorable. Um, it's kind of been like that the last few years. I don't really remember a whole lot of them. Not that they're supposed to, but again, as always, Fox botches the the, the transfer to make the 500. Remember all those great uh, dual races where there was multiple people trying to make it in? Well, that doesn't happen anymore because of the charter system, and that just completely destroys anybody's chances of making it in because it also doesn't help, too, that owning a cup team takes like $12 million just to even start it, so that doesn't help anyway. So... That's a whole stupid thing about the charter system being just bad, and I just wish it would just die and it not exist anymore. But there's only there was only two cars. I think it was I think it was in the first duel. There was only two cars. I'm getting myself situated in my chair because I'm gonna fucking rant beyond comprehension. But there was only two cars, and Fox failed to show the pass to make it into the 500. Two cars. They were in the back, but they like didn't even try to figure out like to be invested in like who makes it it was so pathetic so sad that they can't even get their focus on two cars trying to make it in or two cars trying to battle in for one spot while you know what 10 15 years ago there was almost half a dozen a dozen cars trying to make it in and they would always have like a side by side of like you know the cars racing in their way in and they failed to like televise and, and and keep us up to date on that. Like that was sad. That was really pathetic and really sad. The no words to describe it. The fact that they were unable to uh, capture it and it just like articulate that. That's just really pathetic. And also, I didn't even forget in the in the uh, the clash. Um, they they forgot. They f didn't film Ryan Blaney throwing a harness at someone. At a track that's a quarter mile long, they missed it. That is sad. Their TV production is so abysmal in that race. I, it's amazing. I, I, like, how they missed that? 
like god at least that'll be something of interest that happened but no it was just it was just never captured so good job on them for missing that so that's just another blunder of the horrific like telecast of that but yeah um the duels themselves they were just uneventful i keep saying uneventful but it's just not a whole lot happened just i don't even know what to even write them i i guess a three because it is better than the class the clash so there is that then the Daytona 500. Actually, I, I did a, a watch party for that, and the race itself was really the best one since 2016. Because the other previous ones were shit shows of different caliber. 2017 was a shit show mess. 2018 was the same thing, except Austin Dillon turned Eric Amarola in the last lap, which was just classless and just embarrassing. 2019 was. I actually purposely slept through it because I knew because I heard about the they were going to use the All Star package and that just made me lose all interest. So I slept. I purposely did a stream sleeping through it, and apparently it turned out the race was good. So that was kind of funny in my part. But then when I woke up to see the last like fifteen laps, um, it was just a wreck fest and it was just stupid. So that made that twenty nineteen one was probably the best one since twenty sixteen. But again, the bar has been set so low. It's just yeah. 2020, the same sort of thing, except Newman took a car to the face, and Fox was very insensitive in how they did all that, because before, because the universal sign, I'm getting situated in my seat again, because I'm going to rant. That's when you know, like, a rant's coming. If I'm getting, like, situated, because I'm getting perched up, I'm getting I'm getting bowed up, because this shit, it just pisses me off, because it's so um, insensitive. But, so, Newman takes a car to the face, the car slides, it comes to a stop. The universal sign that a driver is okay is when they drop their, their, uh, their, uh, oh my god. Their, their, I'm so, I'm, I'm so sorry. I Thank god I'm gonna edit this out because this is really awkward, but the universal sign that a driver is okay is that they drop their window net. That's, that's just the the cool cool locally known thing I I can't talk for shit but yeah that is the universal sign and Newman didn't do that Newman's window net was not down so be, since that you know occurred Fox thought it was a great idea at that time. To show a super duper slow mo up close shot of of the car hitting Newman, it's like, what are you thinking? Like that? Can you imagine how if that was a fate? Like we watched witness a fatality and they showed that wreck so soon. Generally, when there's a serious accident, they refrain from showing a replay right away until they know the driver's okay, and then they show the replay. Sometimes the wait time is, you know, that's up for debate on, like, how long you're, you're supposed to wait and all that stuff. But they showed it pretty much right away. So, and that was before Newman even got out of the car. And the car, like, clearly, so, like, I, I, it's just, it, it just goes to show that they're just, they're so used to to the wrecks. They're so used to drivers getting out. They just, they, did, they just didn't think it was possible for someone to get hurt. But we never saw a crash in that specific way where a car... Hits the window. <laughs> like, it was just bad. It was just very unprofessional for them to do to show that so soon. That bugged me. That was awful. And that just made everything worse. And it was very scary because, you know, that was the closest to a fatality since 2001. And, yeah. And that's a whole other rant about the, the Gen 6 package at the Richard Place at that time period. Where the suck up on the were was so strong and the, there were so many wrecks, it was just like it, it, like you were just expecting someone to get hurt eventually, and it, it did happen. But that's the whole thing. Twenty twenty one was still the same uh, shit show, except there was a wreck fairly early on, and then I left most of the race with just people not doing much, and then, um, yeah, and then yeah, I'm I'm literally rambling on about other day twenty five partners, but I'm kind of giving you a perspective of like. My, my bar, my expectations of the last, like, six years for the 500. But, yeah, this was the best one since 2016. Through and through, it was pretty solid. And uh, there was the weird Harrison Burton flip that was bizarre, and still it's bizarre because we haven't really seen a wreck like that since. 
So it may have just been a one in a million chance of, with the way the car flipped. But again, there's been some weird concerns of the Gen 7 cars being unsafe because Newman even said that he was unsafe about them. And I'm going to take Newman's word on this because they literally, not, Newman himself literally uh, kind of like, I don't, I don't know if it's mandated, but he invented an extra bar in the in the car to hold up the, the roof called the Newman bar, or Newman device or whatever it is. So Newman has an idea of like when it comes to like safety and how things should be. And I'm going to take his word for it because he's been in a lot of crazy accidents. And if he's saying that the Gen 7 car, he felt that they were unsafe, that kind of worries the shit out of me. But, um, but it was just weird because, uh, Harrison Burton's car, like the back of it, like the, the back window, like completely collapsed. That was just weird. I don't know, but. Yeah, so that wreck was just bizarre. The actual race itself was pretty good um, until the end where Cedric pretty much doored everyone to win the race. And he was very happy and ecstatic about that being a garbage piece of shit driver that he's been for multiple years. So didn't really like that aspect. Um, just again, I it's a, it's a it's a moral thing. But I would me myself as a driver, I would not use my car as a brick to punt people away. I know off the track in the wall to win the 500 because there's so many different ramifications, different consequences that can happen where if I did that, a car could spin flip, hit the catch fence. We could see like too much bad shit can happen. And the less you want to try to do that, the better. And eh, he didn't care. So he just doored everybody he could win. So that's, you know, good, good for him. That doesn't make his win any special. That just shows, you know, uh, more reasons why I don't like him. Uh, 2017 in the in the truck series where he ran over Kaz Grawl, so that was just you know, classless, and he made the chase because of that too, and he fucked Ryan uh, Ryan Truex or was that that was great, and did basically next to nothing in the truck series. It really shouldn't be in there in the series because, but you know he's a paid driver, and he's he you know it's a classic case of that. So it's a whole rant on that. I don't want to get into that. Yeah, so the 500 was pretty good for the most part, but the ending kind of soured it, and again. I, uh, the ending of a race is important because it, it, it is the last impression you get of the race. So whatever rating I had before, if it finishes good, it gets bumped up one extra notch. And if it finishes bad, it gets knocked down one extra. So originally I was going to probably put the 500 around a 7 out of 10. But because I had that finish played out, I'm going to bump it down to a 6. So that's where I stand with that. And overall, it was pretty solid. Again, I didn't really think there was anything wrong with it inherently. So... It was the best 500 since 2016. Auto Club. So, I don't really have a whole lot to say about Auto Club other than it was just a rock-solid race. Um, in terms of just the, the car, there wasn't such an insane amount of the, the downforce and side force and all that other crap messing up the, the racing too bad. A lot of that is attributed to Auto Club being a good track because there's so much wear on it. So, tires degrade pretty quickly. So that kind of helps. But I'm really hoping they don't turn that into a short track. Again, I don't know why they think um, that would be a good idea. I just, again, I wouldn't want to sacrifice a track just to make it a short track. I just think that's dumb. But I'm hoping they don't do that. Um, but who knows? But the racing itself was very good. And I, um, I, I was overall very happy with it. I may have given it a 10, but... There was one element in the race that kind of bugged me. It was just a lot of tire failures, a lot of loose wheels. So, it just kind of hinders it. And it defeats the whole purpose of the one lug nut to make that occur less. Because there's only one. And I don't even know why they even bothered with one lug nut when five worked before. So, it's like, what was the sense in that? There's just a lot of issues. There's still issues with it. So, I, I don't know. It's just baffling. It wasn't broke with the other way before. Now it is. So it's just like a change that just makes it worse. So it's that's that's dumb. That that kind of hinders it. But the racing itself was very good. And I, I overall really liked it. It was one of, my, one of my favorite races in the season. And I was really happy with how the car uh, raced. And, and though it is, it may be, you could chalk it up as, a, as an anomaly or just an auto club thing. Just because track is worn. Um, even with a gen... With the 550 package, that race was still slightly better than average because it was such a worn track. So it kind of always has a little bit of an edge no matter what. But 
Um, Vegas, the next race, was going to be the big question mark of how that was going to be. At a mile and a half, at a typical mile and a half, and it turned out to be pretty good. Uh, throughout the race, there was cars and goers. The, the, it was pretty, pretty good overall. I really enjoyed it. The, the only, um, the only thing that that hinders it from being really about a a nine out of ten is just the finish. It was really setting up to be Truex and Kyle Busch duking it out, and that was really going to be awesome. Then Yellow came out, then Pit Strategy came into play, and then it was between. Larson and Bowman and the camera work was bizarre because they only showed like the, the overhead view of the finish which is weird and again Fox has always has been so bizarre with the camera work this year and I don't it's just it's very obnoxious so that was just weird um it just kind of hurt the finish even though it was pretty good overall just um, I just wish it was just a long green flag run where it was between Cowboys and Shreks because they were like the two best cars there at the end and it was shaping up to be something interesting, but it didn't happen and we got Bowman and Larson out on old tires. That was, yeah, that was a big boner to play there. So I would give that a pretty solid 8 out of 10. Another really solid one. Just slightly below Auto Club, but still a rock solid one and it really showed that this Gen 7 car is very good at mile and a half. And the dirty air issue is not nearly as big of a problem. Cars can race side by side. It just overall was a lot better. So that is very good to see because that's been one of the biggest complaints with the 550 power package bullshit thing. And they, they I guess they fixed that. So yeah, that was good. Phoenix is just a very forgettable race. I, I, I don't even really remember a whole lot happening. So it's, which is worrisome because if they're going to the season finale later in the season at that track, then how... It's going to be like a really boring, uneventful one unless something changes between then and now, which may be the case. But yeah, this should have been a sign to come with that. Like short tracks were going to be kind of a problem, even though it's not really a short track. But yeah, it was just, it just I don't really remember a whole lot of it. So I, yeah, it's I'm I'm just going to give it a two. Oh God, Lana. Oh boy, I. If, First of all, it's absolutely stupid to make Atlanta a baby Daytona and Talladega. It's stupid from the start. It looks dumb. And NASCAR is very really advocating you know, driver safety and all this stuff. Yet they add another track that kind of encourages more wrecks. It's like defeats the whole purpose of that statement. And they completely bastardized a track that has been on the schedule for... 62 years one of the older mile and a half on the schedule and they just completely slaughtered it lost all relevancy and they just turned into a mini Daytona and Talladega and just looks dumb acts dumb just not what I would consider racing it's just they, they tell and Talladega are its own unique beast. We don't need it. And that's the thing. It's like, well, it's like, okay, well, maybe we can let Atlanta be its own. No, because if, if we even give them that little, little, little praise, not little praise, but that little advantage of like, hey, this can only be an Atlanta thing. No, they're going to want it to be more. So we, we got to kind of stomp the fire out uh, and, and say, no, that's not a good idea. So again, it's a shame that the track got, you know, I obviously I think we can all agree. Track needed to repave. It was dead, but the track was falling apart in 2021 when Kurt won it. So it's no surprise that it needed to repave. But I didn't think it needed a reconfiguration. And the whole, the whole situation and scenario behind that, where it, it's like NASCAR didn't tell the drivers about, it, they didn't even let them know, they didn't even ask for their input, or to even take it into consideration. So that was just very just dirty and slimy on NASCAR's part to not even tell them. And some drivers, just a lot of them, weren't really fans. But of course. Wonder Boy Chase Elliott didn't say anything because he's a he's a neutral fence sitting soy boy cuck and didn't really say much of anything for or against it, so it's just it's just pointless. A lot of the older drivers older drivers were against it, they didn't like it. As much as I don't like Harvick, he did say it was just it was just not a good idea. And yeah, I agree. So Cowboys was the same way. Um it's just dumb to do this. Because now we have six tracks that are like this on the schedule. They told in Talladega twice. So that's four. And then Atlanta twice. So now that's six. We don't. There's no need to make it. 
I mean, I'm still under the impression that we don't even need that many restrictor plates to begin with. I think two max would be fine. One at Daytona, Daytona 500, one at Talladega, and then done. I mean, I would say keep the Coke 400 because that's been a part of the thing for forever, but they changed it. They put it at a different point in the year, so it's not even in July anymore, so it's lost all of its like value and marquee. So at that point, might as well just get rid of it entirely if you're just not going to... If you instead of just putting it into a part of the season and, and a playoff race, which is stupid, so yeah. But the race itself was a typical uh, uh, just just shit show, and it's just it's just dumb. I, I don't even know what to say. It just looks dumb, race is dumb, and I'm not a fan of it unless they want to try the 670 package there. Maybe that would be better, but. Who knows? But I'm going to give it a three. It's just... I remember something of it, so that's why I guess the thing over Phoenix. Which is weird, because I'm ranting about that way more, but... Yeah, this was just... Yeah, it was just rough. Nah, I'm going to give it a two. Yeah, fuck, I'm going to give it a two. Just, just makes me... makes Just sickens me thinking about just what they did to that track, so I'm just going to... I'm going to knock it down a peg. I think it makes sense. I think it's only fair. Um, it's just on one end, it for like a pure spectacle of like, I guess you could consider it good, but from like a racing standpoint, it's just it's just nonsense. Like if you want to go into a race and for it to not make sense, and if you just want to go watch things look close, then you know from that from a pure spectacle standpoint, I guess that would be good. I hope I'm making my point, but. It's just uneventful. It's just not uneventful, but it's just, it's just gross. So yeah, it's, it's getting a two. Coda. I, it's really good. I, from beginning to end, it was very entertaining, and nobody really got too far away from each other. With like, there was it never seemed like there was a dominant car. There was just it was just a rock solid, entertaining race. Again, the only issue that hinders it, hinders it for being a ten. Is just the stage breaks at road courses. They're stupid. I think stage breaks in general are stupid. I like the idea of rewarding points throughout the race, but stopping the race is stupid. It's dumb. I hate it. I've always hated it, and especially road courses, it makes it even worse because it stops the flow. It stops any potential for strategy. It also comes to a grinding halt and when you have a caution like that, or like, you know, a, a forced caution. And you gotta go around a track, especially at a track like this that takes normally two minutes to get around. But now if you go into pace laps, that's like five minutes, ten minutes maybe even, for all that to go through. So that's like 20 minutes of the race just being under yellow. And that just drags the race on even more. So that unfortunately hinders it what would have been a probably a 10 out of 10. But again, for me and my rating system, a 10 out of 10 race is very hard to come by. And it will take a lot for a race to be a 10 because I feel like a 10 should be in a very high standard. This is close, but again, the stages affect that. So yeah, but overall it was, a, it was a really good race, very entertaining finish that adds to the memorability of it. But yeah, it worked out really well. So yeah, I wish it was, I wish that we didn't have to go to Texas at all and just have Coda and then not go to Texas at all anymore. But I don't know, I guess we'll see what the Gen 7 car can do there. It might be better than what we expect. I, I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out. So Richmond, um, kind of like what Martinsville is going to be like in the list next. But um, it, it was so boring. <laughs> it was so boring. I was just, just not much happened. The only interesting thing, the only thing that gives this a slight edge over Martinsville is a tire strategy, the tire degradation made this race... And elevate it from what would have been probably a two to a three because that finish and how that was getting played out because it was just organically done, well, as organically as it could possibly be, with like you know a long green flag run like that. And um, Hamlin did uh, the extra pit stop and actually ended up working out for him. But what hinders it even more is Fox's inability to kind of keep up with that. Like, they really didn't focus, like, they, they reacted like as if Hamlin winning was kind of a surprise when looking at the intervals, like, he was closing in tremendously, and it seemed like, you know, it was possible he could do it. I didn't I didn't think it would be possible, but he did. Same with him and Harvick, and they were right next to each other 
moving up through the field throughout that whole run. So that should have been something that they should have focused on more, but they didn't really do that enough. So it just kind of, yeah, it just makes it weird because, you know, if, if I can spot that, then how come they couldn't? It's just weird, you know. So that, that, that was unfortunate, but that does give it the slight edge because there was some kind of strategy involved. And I do like that aspect of the tire falling off and everything, but if it didn't have that, it would have been even, it would have been lower on the list, but it, it was the only interesting, memorable part of the race. And I, I enjoyed that, but that doesn't save a good, it doesn't save the race at all, but I, I did like that. So Martinsville, this was one, this is probably the worst race of the season, um, right up there with like Phoenix. And this is, uh, been, it was just, there was, I think zero lead changes for the lead. Like, on track. There was one during the pit stops. Which is really pathetic. <laughs> that was really pathetic. Very uneventful. I don't know what the hell happened, but this package's biggest problem it seems to be the short tracks, which I didn't think it was possible to mess up a short track, but... Short track package? But apparently they did, because Richmond was bad, Martinsville was atrocious, so they definitely gotta figure something out with that, because that was just... Just so boring and uneventful. It was a 400 lap race too, which I don't even know why they bothered to cut it down. That's a whole other thing that was going on in social media. Haley Deegan being an absolute clown as usual. The same person that that said COVID was a hoax. Yeah, that dumbass. Yeah, they, uh, she was advocating for shorter races, even shorter races where it's only half the distance of the actual race. Really, but, but I, I I literally flubbed my words because my brain just saying it like wanted to die but yeah she was saying like to cut the races in half so like what a 500 mile race would be 250 but then that would make even less sense because some some xfinity races are 300 miles and some xfinity races are so oh, that would mean the xfinity races are longer but that's not the point the cup series cup series is supposed to be the top elite and it's supposed to be a war of attrition and nascar has always been about long races now the only thing i think would make sense in terms of shortening races would probably just be Texas and Atlanta now because they they absolutely butchered Atlanta. So those two are maybe the only exception, but everything else should remain the same because I don't think there's really any issues with it. The actual issue is either throwing out yellows that aren't necessary, like a random spin, and like I, I, for um, I can't really name an example, but like they over the years they've thrown out weird yellows for the Richmond 2017. Where a car gets close to the wall, they threw a yellow for that. Um, random spinouts that really shouldn't have been a yellow, where they they spun off the racing surface and they got back going, then they threw a yellow, like at a two mile track, like that's not gonna, like d cautions that don't need to be cautions. The stage breaks don't help either, so that that pads out the race. If we fix that, remove that, then yeah, we'll see the the the, the speed of the races go up a little more. For that pathetic attention span that can't handle three hours of watching a race. Or four. Ooh. Which is just really sad and really pathetic of our fucking culture to be at this point. And of course, Haley Deegan has to, you know, pit, chime in and be, be the, the king of dumbasses with all that. So that was really stupid. But yeah, the race was bad. It was shorter. That didn't make it better. It made it just, still made it just as bad. So it was, pff, yeah, just stupid. That, uh, <sighs> Haley Deegan is unbelievably stupid and has done nothing in her career in the cup in like the main three series like in trucks nothing she has two arco west east wins or something so that's more than danica that i mean it's a it's a low bar but it's something but she had a bump and run them out of the way and to, to win them so it wasn't even really based on like actual like race craft the method is just running people out of the way so that's like half half a credit so, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the, just... The, pff, Martinsville is just very... Un just boring. Just boring. Just the worst, probably maybe the worst race out of the season. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I'm a little unfair to Phoenix, but... Martinsville definitely... Definitely on a whole other level of bad. Bristol Dirt. Oh, boy. So, uh, compared to the, to the previous year, 2021, where that was a, uh, a, a mess, a shit show... Um, the track wasn't properly prepared. Dust was being kicked up, and then people couldn't see. That was bad. Um, this year was much better. It was prepared properly, at least to some extent. But the rains, the rain ruined it. 
which they they put the, this Bristol race in in a part of the year where it rains more in that country. I said country. I'm fucking stupid. In in the state, so it's been like this for like a decade now, or like eight nine years. Um, at this, I, I just wish Bristol would just not have a date because it's just so much. It's such a waste of money and resources to cover the track with dirt when you can go to Eldora and go to Knoxville and try this out and not try to like Frankenstein a paved track into a dirt one. And it's that's I'm not really a fan of that aspect. I just think. If a track isn't, if the if track has two dates and one of the dates aren't working, then ax it. If it's going to be a problem, that one isn't a good is a good example. But attendance is up, ratings are up, so I guess you know I'm, I'm in the minority and it is working. But it was a overall pretty average race. The finish elevated from what would have been probably a five to about a six, so that was kind of nuts. But yeah, so um, definitely way better than the previous year. Maybe two times better because the previous year was probably like a two or a three. So this is two times better. So maybe 2023 will be a nine. I don't know. But it was it was just a very uh, average race minus the, the rain situation, which sometimes, you know, obviously NASCAR can't control. But they can control the dates of when these races start to happen in a month where less rain is likely. But it's just, it seems like it happens so much that I don't know. But at least the track was prepared. So there's that. Talladega. Um, I was a again um, it was just similar to the 500 it was overall very good it's rock solid the runs weren't as insane as they once were in the gen 6 so through the close up wasn't too as crazy and the finish was all right except for the fact that larson t- doored kurt bush because he didn't know he was there and that that was that was kind of pissed me off and then larson said after the race oh Oh, I ran a perfect race, and it's like, what well, you fucking stupid? Yeah, I, you ran a perfect race by Doran Kurt. That's a that's a smart thing to do. That's a smart thing to say. I'm glad r- your idea of running a perfect race is to door someone into the wall. That good job. And then to not even a- acknowledge like what he did to Kurt in the interview. It's like, wow, that's fucking that's that's some bullshit right there. Our champion, ladies and gentlemen. Also, he was the same person that. Uh, Justin Haley and, and Larson got together in the in the clash, and he just like dumped them, which was bizarre because just wasn't necessary. So our champion, you know, I I personally think he's a legitimate champion, but like yeah, that was just dumb. This weird Larson things he's done. I can go on a whole tangent about Larson, but I'm not gonna do that here. But yeah, that was just weird. So that was I'm more I'm more salty of like of him than really anything in the race but the overall race itself those last like that last stage went caution free which is the longest that a race has gone caution free since the 2002 Talladega race where that went caution free that one there in 2022 that was the longest stint 60 plus laps or 70 or whatever it was it was lengthy it just it was a naturally played out last part of that race, which was pretty fucking awesome. And also, Eric Jones was getting pushed by someone, and his car was sliding and skating. That was badass. So props to Eric Jones for really showing he has more talent than I originally thought of. So props to him. But yeah, it was just it was it was really good. It wasn't like a ten out of ten or anything or nine out of ten, but it, I would give it a it was solid seven, solid seven. I think that's you know pretty fair. A little bit better than the five hundred. The finish wasn't an abomination of mankind, so that's kind of what saved it. But yeah, it was it was similar to five hundred, just, just a little bit better in my book. Then we get to the most recent week at Dover, and the race got rained out on Sunday because NASCAR still thinks it's a great idea to have the race at three o'clock, and it's bitten them in the ass so many times that it's quite comical and this was another example they started the race at three and they got about 60 laps in there was something and then well but maybe 40 laps in and then the rain came and then it was postponed to the next day but if the race was at noon or if it's at one then we probably would have gotten the majority of the race in or even at, even at noon 
they would have gotten almost the entirety of the race in. And then also, why have a start time for a track that doesn't have lights that's that late in the day for, for racing, well, for NASCAR standards? By the way. That's stupid. That's a whole tangent about the start times of why they do it. It's all for corporate bullshit reasons where they do it to appease the TV, you know, to TV shit, which has bit them in the ass more than it's benefited them, but ratings are off, so maybe I'm the one. Maybe I'm the fool. But, yeah, in this case, it was just dumb. It's stupid to have a, have a start time for a track that doesn't have lights. That's just, yeah. It's dumb. Because even if it started at 3, the race would be 3 or 4 hours long. It would end at like 6 or 7. It would be getting close. Not yeah, close to dark to night time, but like, be getting there. So, you're kind of playing on... Oh, because, no, because the West Coast can't fucking wake up at 9 a.m. Oh, the, the horror. God, imagine imagine being an F1 fan and wait, had it staying up till like 2 a.m. or watching a race at 4 in the, in the morning. Well, that's, I, 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 know, I don't do that, but I know other people do. But they stay up either all night or they wake up very early to watch an F1 race. Like, they have, you really have to go above and beyond to, to watch an F1 race that early. Um, but yeah, 9 a.m., apparently that's just that's just too hard, which is really sad. Sometimes it makes you wonder about society and just how sad it is. And also, but even getting the whole tangent about, um, uh, hey, I'm going to sensitivity training over a fucking meme because this world is so fucking soft, pathetic, that even Larson wasn't even offended by it. So, like, what's the sense in that? Oh, because... So, like, just... It's just stupid. Like honestly, at this point, it's just it's so it's so corporate, so soft, and just like it's a, it was a harmless, funny, goofy meme. I when I saw the thing, like I was just like, oh, that's pretty accurate. But oh no, it's insensitive because Larson's Asian. That person, the clip was Asian. So like that's that's racism. It's just stupid. So it's, yeah. I don't know, it's just, it's just such a fucking soft, pansy-ass fucking world sometimes. It's just so pathetic. That that was dumb. So. I even get into Dover, but that's almost kind of perfect for how I felt about Dover, because it was just a very, um, well, eh. Eh, no, that's not probably fair, but yeah, it was pretty good. Shockingly. Gen 7 car provided a very entertaining Dover race. I didn't think it was anything that's, that was like a big, you know, like a 9 or a 10 out of 10, but it was a pretty rock-solid race. And the only thing that really hinders it is just the finish being kind of uneventful. But the actual race itself was very solid. There was passes for the lead. There was a pass for the lead, like, 40, 40 laps before we even got into it, which was already better than Martinsville. Which is, that's sad. But, yeah, it was comers and goers throughout the race. Um, pit strategy was about to come a, uh, kind of come to play. Tire degradation was pretty severe. Maybe too much because tires were cording, which you don't want tires to cord. But I liked the idea that, uh, that tires mattered to an extent. And, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. I mean, Dover the last few years haven't been, like, great. But this was definitely a big standout one. So... I'll I'll probably give it a seven. I'm not gonna give it a nine or ten. Well, not well. Pfft, I'm not gonna give it that high, but I was thinking maybe a six. But I don't think that's fair to Dover in this race. So I'll give it a seven. But that's basically my thoughts. I don't know what the average rating would be, but it's probably around a six or six point five maybe. But oh yeah, overall the season has been way better than previous years. Um, there's been other seasons where it's been atrocious. Really, this is about the best season since maybe 2018. Maybe that's maybe a stretch, but the first half of 2018 was atrocious, so it might be better than 2018 for sure, because I we'll have to see how the second half of the season plays out. But so far, it's definitely, um, the problem, at least in my opinion, the best season since 2016. I don't know if that's saying a lot, because the other seasons before that were just bad. Because the aero package was horrible, nothing much happened in most races, so it's just... So, I I don't know. But it definitely is the best season, at least in my opinion, since 2016. And that's how it's shaping up to be so far. Obviously, it could change, but we'll see how it plays out. But obviously, from here on out, we'll kind of get more of my thoughts throughout the season. 
And I'm going to try to make them not too overly long. I mean, kind of getting my thoughts in general. I'm hoping they don't go over 10 minutes. I think a lot of these are just off the cuff and, and everything. But I'm sure if I do like a weekly race review, I might be, have, have more to say. Because there's just one thing to remember instead of 12 races to remember. So I don't know. But yeah, that's my thoughts. That's my long winded thoughts on the season thus far it's been like i said uh better than average and really the best season since yeah 2016 because 2021 was a was atrocious except for a few tiny highlights 2020 was abysmal 2019 was abysmal uh, 2018 the first half was atrocious the second half was was all right but the, the champion was a clown so that doesn't really legitimize anything and it, it shows how dumb the, the format is 2020 was atrocious too with that um, 2017, there was an actual like legitimate champion actually earned it, so that was like that was fair. But most of the racing that year was rough. 2016 was really the only one I remember that had pretty decent racing. So I don't know. That's just my 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 opinions, which are very nuclear. I know no one's gonna, not really much people are gonna agree with, but I gotta have something for the channel with content, and this is this would be one you know one good case of me always bringing them out. Bring them up every week, so yeah. Um, that's really it for me. I'll see you all in another video. I'll see you all next weekend for the cup race and all that stuff. So yeah, let me know what you think. Should I keep doing these? I guess I can, but kind of curious. But yeah, I'll do it for me. I'll see you all later. Take care. Everyone.